All right, students, welcome to the notes about chemical and physical changes. Feel free at any point to pause the video if you need to take some time to write things down. You're welcome to rewind or scrub backwards if you need to review a concept again. But let's go ahead and get started. How do chemical and physical changes differ from chemical and physical properties? Go ahead and write this essential question at the top of your page. I really recommend that you make a T-chart of chemical change versus physical change. And, and this could take up your entire page, but go ahead and fill in the corresponding sections as we go. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with what a chemical change is. A chemical change is a change to a substance when one or more pure substances react together and change into an entirely new substance or set of substances. So a chemical change basically gets a chemical formula. Now, previously we talked about chemical properties, so how is this different? Well, a chemical proper property describes a chemical change before it actually happens. So chemical properties for a substance could describe that it can have a chemical change, but they haven't happened yet. A chemical change, on the opposite hand, is where the change has actually occurred and we get a new formula. Let's contrast that with physical change. A physical change is a change that affects one or more of the physical properties of a substance. And I'll give you some examples of each of these, but we do not change the identity, the chemical formula of the substance itself. Let's contrast that to physical property. The physical property is similar. You're basically just describing the physical characteristics of a substance before it goes through a physical change. So let's take a practice. Let's classify some of these as either chemical or physical properties. So let's start with density right here. So if you notice, and you can actually look at the particles, density is a physical change, right? We could change the density. Notice that density is just how compact the particles are. If we're just changing the compactness of the particles, but not actually changing the chemical formula or structure, then that's just a physical change. An example of that could be water right where we freeze and where we melt water the density can change be more compact less compact um, but we're not changing it chemically flammability that's a chemical change so this is a chemical change flammability uh, it's chemical because we actually when we set something on fire we change the chemical structure of what was there like think lighting a piece of paper on fire you're not going to end up with paper in the end you're going to end up with something completely different Luster, so luster represents the shininess of an object. That's a physical property. So if we change the luster, like if we scratch off the shininess and make it really dull, that's a physical change. If we scratch it off, again, we're not changing the chemistry of the substance. We are just changing the physical appearance of the substance. All right, reactivity, that one is a chemical change. When a substance reacts, it usually combines or, or decomposes or, or changes its chemical structure because it interacts with other molecules around it. Melting point, uh, the same goes with boiling point. Both of those could be our physical properties. When you melt something, you are not changing it chemically. You are just changing basically its density and its kinetics, how fast or slow the particles are moving. The last one's challenging, color change. So if you have a color change, that's a physical property. You're just describing the physical characteristics of what it looks like. However, a lot of color changes uh, happen because of chemical reactions. So it's a little bit of a gray line, but the color change in this instance is gonna be a physical property. So just wanna hit home and talk about those a little bit deeper. Here's one of the examples I talked about where something is melting. So here we have a solid going to a liquid. Again, the particles aren't changing, they're just becoming less dense. So this is a physical characteristic. We can look at water. So here are water particles. This is the solid phase of water. So I'm gonna write H2O with a little S next to it. And then over on the right is the liquid phase of water. And again, we're not changing the actual molecules. It's still H2O in most instances. So these are still physical changes. Now, chemical change on the other hand, like we said, we're changing the substance itself. So here we have wood. It's usually made up of a lot of carbon and hydrogen molecules together. When you light wood on fire, you end up with a completely different substance. Now we no longer have wood, we have ash, which is mostly just carbon because a lot of the hydrogens have broken off. 
Here we can see an example of a chemical change at the molecular level. Here is combustion, similar to what we saw with the fire, but this time we're lighting methane. So here's a methane molecule, and it has to combine with oxygen. If we light those on fire, their particles rearrange and change into something, something completely different. So notice that the particles are still here. They're just in a different format. There's the carbon. Here are the four oxygens, and there are the four hydrogens in different formats. So when methane combines with oxygen and blows up when you light it on fire, you you get carbon dioxide gas and you get a little bit of water that comes out of that and that's known as a combustion reaction. Evidence for chemical change. Now a lot of times we don't get to see chemical changes at the molecular level. We just don't have the ability to, to look at the atoms unless we have super powerful microscopes. So on a day-to-day -day basis, how do we know if a chemical change is taking place? Well, we gotta look for evidence of chemical change. And I underline the word evidence because it's just evidence. It's not saying this is absolutely a chemical change if you see these, but these are giving you some hints to say these are probably chemical changes that you see. So if you have a reaction and light is emitted, like for example, when you break a glow stick and light is emitted, or if you light something on fire and it emits light, that's an, that's an evidence. It's really strong evidence for chemical change that the particles are being changed somehow. If a solid or a precipitate, remember not precipitation, if a precipitate forms or a solid, then we know that's also evidence for chemical change. Here's an example of that right here, where we're mixing two clear substances and we get kind of a solid snotty substance. Now we can use solubility rules to figure out what that substance is, but if a precipitate forms, that's evidence for chemical change. If gas is emitted, so right here, if we mix two chemicals and it emits bubbles or gas, think like baking soda and vinegar volcanoes, that's evidence for chemical change. The gas had to be created or had to be um, made from the particles, so they rearrange and probably created something like carbon dioxide or oxygen or some or hydrogen or some other type of gas. If there's a color change, again, remember color change is representation of a physical characteristic or physical change, but the color change is evidence for chemical change. Um, just be very careful that it's a true color change. If we have a clear liquid churning fuchsia or pink like this, that's definitely chemical change. But if we're just adding food dye to something, that's a color change, but it's not really a chemical change. So color changes, watch out for that. It's evidence of chemical change, but it may or may not be chemical change. The last one is temperature change. If something heats up, if, a, if you mix two substances and then all of a sudden it starts to get really hot, that's strong evidence for chemical change as well. The same thing, it could get really cold. Think of an ice pack. Some ice packs, you have to mix two chemicals together and they get super cold. That is also evidence of chemical change. The last one is odor. If you're mixing substances and nothing smells and all of a sudden you start to smell something, well, that's evidence for chemical change because your nose is just recepting some chemicals that have been made that create a strong odor and it, 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 you feel that in your nose. Lastly, let's just talk about evidence for physical change. These ones are really easy. Just use your senses. If you hear something and it changes, that's a physical change. If you taste something and the taste changes, that's a physical change. If you touch something and, and the, the, the texture changes, that's also a physical change. Smell, so on and so forth. So just use your senses. And if something about your senses causes a change, that's evidence for physical change. All right, that's enough of the notes, guys. Go ahead and do the practice.